We just came off of an awesome lunch and learn in which we learned all about investing. So with that being said, I thought that this video would be best to talk about investments and what to look for when you're thinking about buying an investment property or you're wholesaling an investment or managing a property. So there's three rules of thumb. We call them the three rules, the 1% rule, the 50% rule, and the 70% rule. Let's get started. So the 1% rule is a good indication of cash flow. It tells you if quickly if the property will have a decent cash flow and it'll let you know pretty quickly if it's something that you should pursue. So let's do some examples. The 1% rule is basically a division problem. It's pretty easy. You take the potential gross rental income, so what you expect to get a rental income, and you divide it by the property value. And if that's not 1% or greater, then that property is probably not a good investment and you should move on. Let's do a couple examples together. Let's say you have rental income coming, gonna be coming in of $2,500, and the property value is $200,000. Well, $2,500 divided by $200,000 is 1.25%. Thumbs up, that is a good indication of good cash flow and it passes the 1% rule check. The next one, let's say you have a rental property and it's gonna be $1,000 in rental income and the property value is $100,000. Well that $1,000 divided by $100,000 is 1%, exactly 1%, but still it passes the 1% rule. If on the other hand, the rental income that you're gonna expect is let's say $1,000 again, but the value is $150,000, well that is under 1%, I think that's 0.67%, so that would be thumbs down, not a good indication of good cash flow and thus not a property that you would want to pursue. So that is called the 1% rule, and the closer you can get to 2%, you know beyond a shadow of doubt that that is going to be a great property for cash flow. The next rule of thumb is called the 50% rule. And in this rule, what you need to know is that at, over time, 50% of your rental, gross rental income will go out for operating expenses. Well, what are operating expenses? You can expect them to be like taxes, insurance, maintenance, new roof repairs, so any types of repairs, anything that takes to operate loss of rents from vacancies, anything that it takes to operate the property for it to run. It does not include your mortgage payment. So let's do an example. So you have a rental property that, that brings you in $1,500 a month. You can expect over time that it will cost you $750 a month for repairs and maintenance and operating expenses, leaving you with another $750. Well, if you don't have a mortgage, well then that is your cash flow. And let's say that you have a mortgage and the payment is for principal and interest $500. Well, that will leave you with a cash flow of $250. So if you feel that that is good enough for you to to, um, have as cash flow, then I say that passes check and you move on. If on the other hand, you have a property and let's say the gross rental income is $2,000, over time it'll cost about $1,000 to maintain that property, leaving you with $1,000. And let's say your mortgage payment is $900, leaving you a cash flow of only $100. I would say that that's probably not gonna be enough cash flow over time unless you have a lower term mortgage, like a 15 year mortgage or a 20 year mortgage in which the value is going up continually and the mortgage balance is going down. If it's a 30 year mortgage, I would say $100 cash flow is not enough. Thumbs down and I would look for a different property. So the third and the final rule is mainly for flippers or wholesalers. And I say that because it's important to not only think about the 1% rule and the 50% rule because you're buy, you're, you have a buy and hold strategy, but what if you have a strategy of flipping and you want to buy an investment and improve it and then sell it? Well, therefore, that comes in the 70% rule. And the 70% rule says that you should not pay more for a property than 70% of the property's value of what you can sell it for, including what it's going to take to fix fix up and to maintain the property until you're able to sell it. So let's do an example. So the value of the property once it's completed, let's say is going to be $300,000. Well, 70% of that is $210,000. And let's say that you have done your analysis and your work and you know that to fix up the property to what it needs to be to get that $300,000 value is going to cost you $50,000. Well, that means that you should not pay more than $160,000 for that property. 160 should be the absolute maximum that you would pay because 160, $50,000 is your $210,000 
dollars and that leaves you with about ninety thousand dollars well that ninety thousand dollars isn't going to be pure profit right because you have carrying costs you have taxes insurance maybe mortgage payments or interest to pay while you hold on to that property and you're repairing it improving it and getting ready to flip it so therefore you want to take that into account too so once you take out those expenses maybe that's another ten thousand dollars that leaves you with eighty thousand dollars and you always got to remember cost overruns maybe that fifty thousand dollars ends up being more like sixty thousand so there's another ten thousand dollars so now that ninety thousand dollars is seventy thousand dollars if you don't measure this and you do that 70% rule, you might end up with only 10 or $20,000 in your pocket, which may not be enough money and risk for uh, buying a property of this caliber and then improving it and flipping it. So I love the 70% rule because it gives me a measure of threshold. Honestly, when I can walk away with 20% after operating expenses, after everything, I am very happy. And that usually will become the case if you use the 70% rule. This is Don Connors at Mortgage One, providing you fantastic mortgage solutions and thinking about about your investments for yourself and your clients. Thanks for watching. Please like that YouTube video if you found it helpful and don't forget to ring that bell so that you'll get other indications of videos that I put out. Have an amazing day.